Have you ever been out in the summertime and there's that bug that's in your ear? It's like, it's a gnat. It's always spelled funny to me, G-N-A-T. Looks like a gnat, but it's a gnat. Narcissists seem to be that way because they'll never go away. But the trouble is, it's just not an annoying sound. I wish it were. They keep coming around and they keep causing trauma that builds and builds and we carry it around for years to come if we don't do something about it. So why do narcissists do this? Well, let's look at some of the reasons, the main ones. One, number one, they need their supply. There's something that that target in particular can give to them. It's attention, admiration, intimacy, that target is likely a people pleaser or codependent, and that target will give and give, a giver, not a taker, a lover, not a fighter, and will give to the detriment of himself or herself. What better target for a narcissist to have? They don't have to sit back, they just sit back, they do nothing, and they let the target do all the work so they feel better. Okay, they also, they need their supply, but here's what they do to get it. And it's confusing for targets because we're like, well, maybe that gnat isn't so bad after all because it wakes me up in the morning or whatever it is. They hoover to get the target back to get their supply. And this is the hardest part. Sometimes they leave and sometimes they stay. More often than not, than not they hoover the target back in and then discard the target once again. Hence the trauma. Number two, narcissists play games. Everything's a game. Life's a game. A relationship with them is a game. Pulling the target back in and pushing the target away is a game. How quickly can I do that this time? How slowly can I do that this time? What will it take me to hoover him or her back this time? I wonder how much he or she will take while I push them away. Thoughts that go through a narcissist's head. You know, they want to win those games no matter what the relationship we just talked about. They also want to win monetarily. And they may just want to win socially. Maybe that person that they keep hoovering back in helps them move up in their mind in the societal pecking order, if you will. It's a power play. It's an intimidation that they do to win no matter who is hurt, it doesn't matter if the target is in tears. Sure, they recognize those emotions, but they're gonna keep going because their needs are more important. The target usually, finally, backs down and they win yet again. The gnat is still there. The third reason they don't go away, they're manipulators. They know what buttons to push, good and bad. Here's how that works. They push the good buttons in the target and the target says, oh, you're so sweet. I knew the real you would come back. How can I help you? They push the bad buttons. You're hurting me, you're hurting me. No, I'm not. What did, what are you talking about? I didn't say that. Get your ears checked. Everyone thinks you're crazy. They gaslight. So the target starts to tell themselves, see, I'm not worthy of anything. This is why the narcissist comes and goes because he sees things in me. I'm intrinsically broken and I might as well just be alone and not try anymore. They manipulate through the kids, not just manipulate the target, they manipulate through the kids. I'm not going to give you your toys, son, until you tell me what your mom said or until you talk to your mom and tell her what I said. They put the kids in the middle. The kids are a pawn between mom and dad in this game, really, that only the narcissist is playing. But who does it hurt in the end? It hurts the kids. It can be flip-flopped. Mom can tell dad, or mom can tell the kids, dad says, you're, you're just terrible. So I, I don't know why. You guys are just little heathens. We've got to figure something out. What does it do? It hurts the children once again. Number four, the narcissist cannot take rejection. Yet another reason they keep coming back around. If the target was the one to discard the narcissist, the narcissist is going to do 
everything in their power to win that target back, to prove themselves worthy of that target's love, and then boom, my turn to let you go, leaving the target, typically, a crying hysterical mess. The narcissist wants to prove by these actions that I'm in control, I'm the one who makes the decisions, and I am worthy. Don't play games with me. I decide when you're in my life and when you're not. That's what they're telling the target. Here's a shocker to me, but I, I do believe this one. The narcissist never gets over the target. They just replace the target. There's something that the narcissist saw in that target that drew them to that target, besides being a giver, not a taker, a lover, not a fighter, all of that, the sweet, sweet person. There's something that a narcissist typically sees in that person that they lure in and, and they want it. They don't know how to develop it or get it and many times they're not able to because it's something like empathy that grows from the minute you're born if it's fostered by parents. So they see it and they want it and they don't know how to get it. So, so they do what it takes, they think, to do that and they get you and then they start squashing down that positive trait inside you or whoever the target happens to be. And they do grow tired of the target, sure. They may think the grass is always greener, maybe it gets boring, they think, with the target. So they discard that target, then they start reflecting back because guess what happens? The next person that they lure in, boring too. And the next one after that, so they go back to ground zero. There they are once again, buzzing around the target's ear, doing the hoovering that they need to do to lure that target back again. The narcissist that does this the most is the covert narcissist because they're the ones who are introverted and it takes them a while to finally lure that target in, win that target over. So when they let that target go or the target has discarded the covert narcissist, they're kind of left a little lost. They usually have someone in line to replace whomever that target was, but there's always something there about that first one. And, and they don't want to quite let go of that because they deserve it all, don't they? Or so they think. They keep coming back. And finally, this is on the subject, but not really. I wanted to tell you, I took a class with um, it's his transformational leader, Darius Daniels. Fantastic. It was a three month course, we learned about mindset and reframing things. And I wanted to tell you what he talked about. And I agree with this for most survivors and those of us working to be thrivers, because I know you can do it. We learned that people don't see themselves as they really are. When you're talking about narcissists, they see themselves as much better as perfect when we really know they're not. But when you flip it and you look at survivors and thrivers, we don't see ourselves as the true beings, the amazing people that we really are. And he used this as an example, and I will too. We don't give ourselves credit for what we've done. If you are still standing today, and you've been through all of this abuse, you've dealt with so much narcissistic abuse in your life and maybe other forms of abuse, and you are still standing, you're a survivor. And that, my friend, is huge. So stop right now, celebrate that you're still standing because there are a lot of people on this earth who wouldn't be. They couldn't have survived what you've survived. I know that for a fact. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.